Yay Networks. Welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. I'm your host, Sybil Amuti, and I can't wait for you to hear all of the Great Girlfriend magic on today's show. So without further ado, grab something great to drink, grab your pen and your paper, and get ready for this week's episode. Enjoy. All right. Happy summer, great girlfriends. I have been surfing and watching you live it up on the gram. And y'all are just doing it, doing it, doing it. So shout out to all of you who are just having a magnificent summer and living your whole best life and being outside, outside, outside. By the way, how many of you here break my soul in your sleep? I feel like I go to sleep and wake up with that song running in my head. Whew, way to take over the summer with a new anthem, Beyonce. And yes, I am over the moon excited about the new album dropping in a couple of weeks. We're here for it, B. We are here for it. I'm so ready for it. Okay. And other exciting news. I am looking for a new LA-based part-time assistant. I would like, and I don't feel like I'm asking for much, but sometimes I do feel like I'm asking for a lot. But anyway, I would like an energetic, smart, organized, self-starting, digital media savvy assistant who can help me out on special projects and keep my inbox clear. I repeat, keep my inbox clear. <laughs> she needs to be in LA because I need a person uh, with me in person at least once a week. If you are her, or you know her, or you can refer her, please email welcome at thegreatgirlfriends.com, subject line, LA assistant, and we can start having conversations. And I am so excited about you sending me quality applicants, quality, quality applicants. That's all I have to say. In other, other news, we're kicking off our Ready, Set, Go Refresh Challenge in August. Hey, I'm so excited. I'm like so excited. Ready, Set, Go is like one of my favorite challenges every year with the Great Girlfriends. And this summer refresh is going to be a three-day challenge for those of you who need to drop the overthinking, stop the procrastinating, and make your next move. If that is you, stay tuned for more details going live at thegreatgirlfriends.com and make sure you're subscribed to our newsletter for more details. But please make sure you subscribe to the newsletter because that's where you're going to get all the information. You're also going to see it on social, but you'll have all the information in your inbox and you can register immediately. And I promise you the Ready, Set, Go Refresh Challenge is going to be Ready, Set, Go on steroids because this is the part of the year where we started so many things in January and then we stopped them or we put on pause or we've overthought them. And so there's a little bit of paralysis that might be happening and we want to disrupt that. So that's what you're going to be looking forward to. That's going to be happening in August. And I just want to thank those of you that have left your reviews this month. You are the real MVPs. We're going for 10 reviews minimum during the month of July. And this is our iTunes reviews. And we're getting there. So thank you, thank you, thank you to each of you. And drum roll. If you're a listener and you've not left your review, I am completely side-eyeing you out here in this LA sunshine. Yep. I am judging you like I judge Hoochie Daddy shorts <laughs> and I judge them. I judge them. I need you to get your review in right now. And it literally takes less than five minutes. Here's how to leave your review. If you're an iTunes, if you're a Mac or an iPod or Apple user, excuse me, you're going to go to your podcast app. You literally can go in your search, put in podcast. You'll see a small purple icon. You go to that icon, you search The Great Girlfriend Show. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not subscribed. If you are subscribed, woohoo for you. And you're going to keep scrolling to the bottom of the show until you see Leave a Review. And that is where you're going to place your iTunes review, where you're going to say, this is the best podcast ever. I cannot believe I've been blessed to hear all the amazing shows that the Great Girlfriends have to offer. And this is the space for you, Great Girlfriends, if you want to listen and learn and connect, and da, 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 you know, all the stuff. So that's how you leave your review. And it's so simple. Oh, and you also want to leave five stars to go along with that really amazing commentary, because what is a review without five stars? I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. So that's that on the iTunes review. I want to see your review. I can't wait to celebrate your review. And I'm so grateful for every single one of you that continues to leave your reviews on iTunes. 
Now, I know you're in summer mode and I know you're basking in the dresses and the sandals and the tropical fruit and drinks of it all, but I want to drop in like a great girlfriend should and would and check in on your overthoughts and your overthinking, that part. So this week is all about overthoughts and all about overthinking and all about breaking that paralysis. You know the overthought. It's the ones that seem to keep running and running and keeping you from making your first step. It's the thoughts that grab a hold of you and leave you confused, overwhelmed, and paralyzed with fear, thinking that your next choice or your next decision could or will ultimately be the wrong one. Any overthinkers right now know you're like, oh my God, yes, I'm all in your living room. I'm all in your window. (laughs) I'm knocking at your door. Okay, so most overthinkers don't even realize how much they're overthinking. If it's you, you may be one who carefully plans each step in a process to ensure you're on the right track. You know, you want to make sure everything is just planned to the T. You got it from A to Z. You got step one through 100. You are ready because you have planned it all. Or it could be another great girlfriend of yours. We ain't calling nobody's names. If you see her, don't even don't even look at her. Just glance the other way. Who has been an overthinker for so long that she's the critical one who can tell you all the reasons why something will definitely go wrong and has no room to go right. We all know her. She's thought something potentially beautiful all the way to doom. She literally can take the sun and set it right before your eyes and just blow it ablaze. Like she's that girl. Or... It can be a beautiful day to go to the beach and she'll tell you all the reasons why the crabs in the sand are going to eat you alive and it's no point in you getting out there in the murky water in the ocean and you should just stay home and do what's safe, right? The overthinker, the one who sees all of the destruction and doom that's happening from far, far away, getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And she can take something that is potentially beautiful and refreshing and amazing and she can overthink it all the way to destruction and doom. Or, this is my other one, it could be another great girlfriend who refuses to try something new, leaving no room for innovation because she's caged herself into thinking that doing something new and different will bring too much uncertainty, and so she ultimately keeps her style the same, her routine the same, her career the same, her path the same, everything the same and everything becomes so predictable that she's not even fun and curious anymore. She's not even excited about anything. What was a vibrant woman full of extraordinary ideas becomes a basic woman who feels trapped in her head with no way out. Ooh, what a life, right? So why do we do this to ourselves, great girlfriends? Why do we overthink? I want you to stop for a second and ask you, why do I do this to myself? Why do I spend so much time overthinking? Well, here's a few reasons why we do this, including myself, because I'm here to tell you, you are not alone, right? First one is that fear of failure makes us want to run away from anything that can create new failures. That will be anything outside of our control. And most of the world is outside of our control. Isn't that something? Fear of not being enough is the second one. It leaves us playing the same position over and over in an effort to show the world that we are capable of doing something well. Many times we play it safe so that we can be the queen of something in our lives because everything else makes us feel inadequate. Yikes, right? All right, then there's this. The fear of the unknown makes us risk averse and makes us afraid of being the one who doesn't have the answers. Fear of the unknown is the death to so many books that haven't been written, new careers that haven't launched, new relationships that can't be formed, new homes that can't get purchased, new legislators that can't get elected, new choices that can enlarge our territory. Fear of the unknown, that risk aversion, is a trap. Fear of the unknown is the death to untapped potential, and fear of the unknown is the death to our faith. So many great girlfriends are losing life and opportunities to the fear of the unknown. And I've been there and you may have been there and maybe you are there now. And that's why this episode is just for you. (laughs) So do any of those resonate with you? We talking fear of failure, fear of not being enough, fear of the unknown. Do any of those resonate with you? Is fear strapping you down and keeping you stuck when you know you're meant to fly? You want to stop and think about that for a second. Or how about this? Have you overthought yourself into a journal full of visions? You write it all down. And a life 
that lacks luster because you never take those visions in your journal and bring them to life? Are you trapped there? You want to think about how many times have I written it and I planned it and I mapped it and then I just don't start. Oh, such a trap. If that's you, I want to help you today, great girlfriend, because that was me. I was an extreme overthinker and I still do struggle some days with shutting those thought trains down so, and ending that cycle so that I can actually execute as the CEO that I am. And I understand how the wires get crossed in your mind because I've been in between decisions for years before I actually took the leap on them. My move to LA is the biggest one as of most recently. And most of you know a lot about our, our move to LA. My family's move to LA was a big choice. It took us four years to actually make that transition through obviously pandemic, the loss of my father, the looking for schools and community for my children, and even just trusting the idea that it was the next choice for us. I overthought that bad boy into, ah, maybe we're not supposed to do it, but God, thank you, God. <laughs> there was an interception, an interruption in my thoughts that allowed us to give ourselves permission to make the choices and do something different. So I know the cycle is exhausting and I want to help you get out of it today. And this is so simple, great girlfriends. It's so simple. I know those fears are overwhelming and they're debilitating, but these steps can really truly help you just Look at the things that you've been looking at with fresh new eyes, right? So here's a few steps that can get you going in the right direction. The first step, you got to go easy on yourself. You have to go easy on yourself. I realize we spend so much of our life going so hard and we're so busy working on things and reworking and reworking weight loss, reframing weight loss, shifting weight, toning weight, you know, uh, getting amplifying weight in certain areas of our body and, and thinning out others, exfoliating, getting the softest, smoothest, buttery skin, right? Getting into a great career and then finding the right mentors and then taking the right classes and courses and overthinking what success could look like, right? or what happiness could look like. And even in marriage and romance, trying to buy all the things and do take all the tips and do, do all, the, all, the, all the exercises and all the things just going so hard all the time, right? But we need to go easier on ourselves and simplify a lot of our expectations that we put on ourselves. So you weren't designed to move an entire mountain in a day, nor were you designed to make mountains out of a molehill. Sometimes we take something really small and we turn it into something so big. And those big mountains just feel so hard to climb and to move, move beyond. And so we've got to go easy on ourselves. You were designed and I was designed to take steps, small ones and big ones, all steps that add up to a lifetime of choices that make life meaningful, right? You're designed to take steps, great girlfriends, small ones and big ones. And all of these steps add up to a lifetime of choices that make life meaningful. Some of us are trying to, you know, jet ski through choices, take uh, fighter jets through choices. Some of us are trying to ride horses through choices. We've got to take steps, small ones and big ones. So go easy on yourself. Don't apply so much pressure to the point that you feel exhausted at the thought of making a choice. Go easy, simplify the choices, right? That is step one. Step two, write down the goal, that, that big goal, and the next step you need to take to get there. Just the next step. You don't want to write all the steps. And if you do write all the steps, I understand how that paper can feel like it's attacking you or the idea can attack you because it overwhelms you. We don't want all the steps. We just want the next step. Because when we just take the next step, you open up your world to the possibility that at the next step, you may learn something different that it permits you to take a different step than what was on the paper. So being open to the process, but writing down the goal and the next step, not every step, just the next step. What's the next step, right? That you will need to take to get there. Then set a time and an accountability partner to help you commit to that step. I love an accountability partner that can really check in with me, someone who's really, really uh, organized and smart and savvy and willing to step on my toes and be like, Sybil, you're overthinking. Sybil, back that thing up one step at a time. Remember, you are only taking one step and that one step is good enough to get you to the next step. And I think we got to recognize that the step that I take in this moment qualifies me and it's good enough 
for me to take the next step. And I don't have to compare my steps to the next person's steps because sometimes we overthink if we see the person next to us and it looks like they're taking bigger steps than us and we overthink our steps and think it's not good enough. No. My one step, it's good enough and it qualifies me to take the, my next step. My next step. All right, step three, you got to forgive yourself liberally so that you can trust yourself liberally. Recognize that the time you've wasted in the past is gone and there's no moving forward looking back. I repeat, there is no moving forward looking back. Accept that you didn't know what you didn't know and you're in the best position now to ask questions to lead you in the right direction. You just want to ask the best questions. And if you get to that next step and you realize, I'm not clear where to go next, you just want to ask the best questions, right? Be open to the idea that the next step is asking a question, not always knowing what to do, but asking the right question at the right time. So you got to forgive yourself for the frustration and the angst that comes along with overthinking. Because sometimes we feel, feel ourselves, you know, feeling so frustrated with overthinking that we talk down ourselves, we have these dirty, nasty conversations about who we are, and we start to get very pitiful. Well, you want to forgive yourself for the frustration and forgive yourself for the angst that comes with that. Then, and only then, can you allow the grace that comes with forgiveness to introduce personal trust into your life so that you can believe in yourself enough to take that cycle of overthinking and turn it into a system of micro and macro choices that make your life beautiful, right? You just want to have micro choices and macro choices, and you want to move of grace to trust them. And the way that you learn to trust them is by forgiving yourself, knowing that it's okay that you didn't know what you didn't know when you thought you should have known it. <laughs> but now you're more prepared and more equipped to take your current set of knowledge, your current base of knowledge, and the questions that are on your heart and take the next step and then go after that towards the next step and the next step and so forth. And you, what you'll find is that what was a big mountain of confusion and chaos and uncertainty has become fractional decisions that all make your life more meaningful. So I hope that encourages you today to rethink the way you see your choices, rethink the way, or rethink, not overthink, but rethink the way you shape your next step and give yourself a lot more grace and freedom in the pathway as you forgive yourself, knowing that you didn't know what you didn't know. And that is okay because now you can use that wisdom as leverage for discerning what to do next. So I want to close out this episode with three affirmations that can speak over your mind on a daily basis. The first one, your first affirmation, my mind is a sacred space where my thoughts are clear and concise. My mind is a sacred space where my thoughts are clear and concise. Number two, I trust myself to make the right choices at the right time to get the right results. I trust myself to make the right choices at the right time to get the right results. Number three, I am at peace with my thoughts. I am at peace with my thoughts. How beautiful are those affirmations? How supportive and how uh, reinforcing are they of who you are and what you're capable of if you give your mind the space to feel and, and to move freely and clearly and trust that you're making the right choices at the right time to get the right results. Whew, I'm excited for you, great girlfriends. If you'd like more help with this, I'm here. Our Ready, Set, Go Refresh will be the place to get reset and disrupt those patterns even more. And if you love this episode, leave your review on iTunes and shoot me a note at welcome at thegreatgirlfriends.com. I cannot wait to hear from you. And I love you, great girlfriends. And I'm cheering you forward from victory to victory. Peace. All right, great girlfriends, did you enjoy this week's episode of the podcast? If so, would you please give us your amazing review on iTunes? Every single review helps another great girlfriend get plugged into the podcast and the community. Speaking of community, make sure you join our Facebook group at The Great Girlfriends, follow us on Instagram at The Great Girlfriends, and on Twitter at the underscore great GFS. 
I'm Sybil Amuti, and I'm out. Peace.